I can't get over how cute Armin looks with his haircut. Oh, and his Annie. I just watched her OVA too. It made me appreciate her even more. What do you think she thinks? Yeah, he's protesting a bit much. What inappropriate thing could you even do with her in the crystal? It's funny, I feel like, in a weird way, Hitch is maybe one of Annie's only friends and not her only friend. Because she has Reiner and Bertholdt, but they're not friends. Their relationship is tainted. And then of course there are the cadets like Armin. But that's not a pure friendship because in her mind they're potential obstacles to her plan. The military police are sort of this neutral group, and among them it seemed like she had the best relationship with Hitch, based on the OVA. They're an interesting pairing, but it works really well. Because Annie is so heavy and so serious for, you know, obvious reasons. Hitch is so lighthearted and carefree, typically. So it feels somewhat fitting that Hitch is there guarding the crystal. I hope this means we get Annie soon. More any. Guides. <laughs> I like how she just concluded that. I mean, he was pretty obvious about it. Paradise might just destroy itself from the inside before anything else happens. Yeah, Hanji became part of the cycle that she once was trying to destroy. Wow, he's become a hero. It's very interesting. What are they doing? Visiting Eren? Elena's been very busy. It's just so complicated, because on the one hand, I understand the frustration of dealing with people, dealing with like a, a bureaucracy, let's say, who doesn't understand the danger. People like Zeke and Yelena have been through so much to get here and then try to wait patiently for like the nobility or whatever to squabble it out. It's gotta be infuriating and potentially dangerous for everybody involved. That being said, you know, going back to the famous words said by my Lord and Savior, Erwin Smith, who gets to decide? You know, there's an arrogance to the belief that one knows what's best for everyone and can unilaterally force that on the whole country. One of the underlying concepts you see a lot in this kind of thinking is like, I know best. I know best and others are stupid. That's a very cynical take because while it's certainly true that there are going to be a lot of people that are uninformed, not everybody's going to be uninformed and you want to contend with the best arguments of others, not the weakest arguments of others. And if no solution is readily apparent among the best people with the best intentions, then as difficult as this is to swallow, sometimes inaction is the best action. Even when people argue it's a binary choice of live or die, it's never that simple, ever. You never know what's going to happen. And even the smartest people get things horribly, horribly wrong in terms of trying to enact consequences that backfire. And the people who have the arrogance to think that they always know best are often the people most in danger of making that mistake because it's humility that makes you see multiple angles. Arrogance is a blinding force. Add to that my gut instinct that Zeke is up to no good, that He's willing to commit atrocities in the name of getting a desired result, and this whole thing puts me off. Well, he was certainly <laughs> successful. A little very large fire. I mean, they are very committed to this. They know what they're after, and I feel like they'll do just about whatever they can to get it. Oh? <laughs> she sounds like a fan. I'm a huge fan of the Founding Titan. Eren sure is popular these days. <laughs> yeah, he, he went berserk. Divine Retribution. That's for sure. Interesting. Yeah, she's sort of like a zealot. In a weird way, there's something kimbly like about her, you know, like siding with the homunculi just to see the, the craziness that unfolds. What is she doing? Uh, 
I feel so bad for Hanji because it, it's so difficult to be in this role. For everyone to be riled up and bloodthirsty like this and for her to be thinking about like, well, let's think it through, you know what I mean? No one wants to hear that. Like I said before, the nuanced perspective is always going to be a harder fight, but you know, so be it. That's just the way it is. But on top of that for Hanji, as support for Eren grows, if it were me, I would grow increasingly paranoid about who I can even trust because Eren's case is a very compelling case. Obviously, I mean like, the viewer is also torn about it, right? So, and the, what do you call it? The volunteers? did such a good job getting here and just ingratiating themselves in this whole world, it seems. Zeke, Yelena, and, you know, their their crew, they just seem so much more equipped in some ways. Erwin, come back! <laughs> Got her hands dirty. Oh no, Yelena. Yelena. What's she after exactly? I'm not smart enough to figure out what they actually want, what they're actually after, or what they believe on the whole. But my feeling is it's something I'm not gonna like. Just because of their methods. Seems pretty clear that they see others as expendable towards their own goals. Ask Armin. He, he'll figure it out in like two seconds. As he always does. <laughs> Yeah, this is this whole thing is just collapsing. Once they start doubting each other, there's just too much factioning going on. That's a bit of a stretch. I mean, it depends on what you mean by manipulated. My instinct is more likely than like an outright trick. It's that Zeke gave Aaron something that he already wanted, or he gave him a path that just played right to Eren's nature, which is sort of manipulation, but I doubt Eren's being duped into this. Or maybe he is. Who knows? No, stop it. No more ass contraption. Besides, I really want to put him in my ass contraption. This is such a crazy position for these two to be in. Oh my god, what the hell? What just happened? Speaking of factioning... Is it Zachary? Holy crap. He's on the lawn. On the plus side, it's gonna be a lot less ass torture around here. <laughs> oh man, I never liked Zachary, so yeah, not too upset about this one. You might say that Zachary reached rock bottom. This is the uh, the end for him. Interesting that he got blown out of the rear of his office. <laughs> Zachary was an ass. <laughs> I noticed his top half got blown out the window. I guess his bottom half wanted to remain with uh, with his favorite device. They were just waiting for this. Show them how angry we are. No, they're corrupting this. You're ruining it. <laughs> this is not what it means. It's exactly what whoever did that wanted, probably. The poetic justice of this. They did see those scout recruits out the window. Yeah, it goes deeper than you think. The volunteers have infiltrated more than just a couple people. Who do you trust? Anji, you gotta get your ship in order. Oh my god, it's just, it's escalating so quickly. Someone really good at moving pawn pieces is, is moving them. Playing a good chess game right now. They were just not prepared for this. Is that Flash? Fleisch? What in the world is going on? I'm like, yep, this could be the start of something bad. <laughs> Three minutes later, Zachary's getting ass blasted and Eren is joining his new army led by Flish Flash and the citizens of Paradise are like ready for war. So yeah, that, that escalated. Good times. You should have never given this man power. <laughs> Speaking of gambles. Oh, 
Yeah, I'm sure Aaron will understand. He's always been the understanding type. <laughs> Give the guy credit, he's good at putting on clothing. Damn, this is insane. I feel so bad for Mikasa right now, honestly. Armin too, but Mikasa more. Like, Armin's all, don't worry Mikasa, Eren is our, our good friend, you know, he'll, he'll listen to us. In Mikasa's mind, for a lot of the show, Eren's been like casting her away. That's something you feel, you know, like you know when you're expendable to someone. And that hurts like hell. Mikasa's been chasing Eren, literally, for the entire show. He's not gonna listen to her. And she's in one of those, like, relationship places where you know something's not working. You know it's wrong, but you're just so invested, you just can't, like, tear yourself away. I don't know, sometimes people you meet, they just turn you into putty. You know, like, you just become helpless in their presence. And Eren is that person for Mikasa. But she's she's growing up. I feel like once you have that that voice that is telling you something's wrong, if it gets to a certain volume, you can't ignore it anymore. <laughs> But it's okay, what could they possibly do with a hundred soldiers and the founding titan? I mean, that is a powerful alliance. Yeah, that's true. And they're still divided. There's just so many divisions. It's over. I, I feel like they just won. Tell him, Pixis. Lay down the hammer. Yeah, Pixis actually is a, is a solid choice for like spearheading some kind of attempt to like reunite. At least we still have Levi. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it does seem that way. They did not play it well. That's a bitter pill to swallow. Not that I like Zachary that much. I don't know what the right move is here. I don't think it's trusting Eren, but I admire the way that Pixis is able to think flexibly, to try to avoid bloodshed, to not be entirely dictated by his emotions. You know, that was a tough decision for him to make, given the fact that he and Zachary were friends. And interestingly, I don't think that Pixis even thinks this is the strategy that will help them win. It just seems to me that more than a lot of characters, he is thinking with his conscience and sort of like being okay with the unknown. You know, like being un okay with being on his back foot for a bit. At the very least, that takes a lot of courage, I think. <laughs> It's not our best moment, all around. Do they though? <laughs> oh yeah, she's still a princess. She's not going with you. An Eldian first, and an Eren fan second, or maybe the other way around. I mean, I feel like it's a valid question. Yes. Wise. Yeah. By the time you guys figured it out, it was too late. I have a feeling your concerns will turn out to be everything. Oh no. It's only gonna get worse, isn't it? What is the full plan? Oh no. Oh, they're there! They're here! Interesting. There's just so much, so much happening. So many sides to this. To Zeke and Yelena's credit, this was a master stroke and one that feels real. You want to make a system weak, you get its participants to fear and hate each other. And interestingly, I feel like sometimes that's easier to do in times of prosperity. Like, the Paradis people were living their best lives for a little while, no? Like, they built a railroad, they wiped out a lot of the Titans, they knew the truth of their world, and yeah, of course, there's the eternal Marleyan threat across the sea. But these are people who've lived their entire lives in crisis. You know, they spent the last, how many decades, centuries, living in these tiny walls on the verge of being eaten. So that's nothing new. And they had made some victories. And suddenly, through the use of just, like, basic information to and what seems to me like a lot of fear-mongering, valid as it may be, they didn't have to fire a single shot. They just 
got the parodies people themselves to battle each other. And speaking of the world being cruel and remembering cruelty, you know, I feel like if we were truly occupying that space mentally, there would be a lot less bickering. There would be a lot less fighting about petty issues because a lot of times when we conceptualize the world or the societies in which we live, we imagine them as sort of like utopia down, right? Like we imagine the perfect situation and we despair at the fact that we're not there yet and we fight about why we're not there yet but we forget that actually the way things happened the way things played out is like what's the opposite of utopia horrible abyss upwards like humans were born into this naturally chaotic state and it's that naturally chaotic state that incentivizes cruelty for one's survival and the extent to which we're out of that is a testament to like strength and will and heroism in my opinion but it can be easy to forget that direction when we live in relative affluence and it becomes really easy to bicker and become hateful about issues that are sort of non-threatening in the grand scheme of things yet are still able to provoke these kinds of rifts that are destabilizing and that plants the seeds for like the actual chaos and cruelty to re-emerge and if it were to re-emerge all these problems would seem so insignificant in light of that something happened with them. Something happened that caused them to be blindsided, to become less vigilant. They lost focus in the shuffle, and people who were more focused were able to come in and exploit that. Admittedly, that's a big challenge for my philosophy too, you know, like in these videos, especially recently, I've been talking a lot about like aim for better things, you know, and don't use evil as justification for more evil. And don't make the excuse that there are no choices when there are always choices, even if those choices include like severe personal harm or death. Still, there's this challenge of like being nuanced or being careful will often lose out in terms of just sheer forcefulness of somebody who is like 100% committed to a cause no matter how evil that cause is. And that's not something to be ignored. And to attempt an answer to this problem, I think one solution is to be anchored to something as powerful as the forces that are sort of invading here, but add to that parameters and longer term thinking where it's not just about winning now, it's about living in a way that would create the most winning long term if widely applied for everyone now and in future generations. And that's an additional challenge which makes it way harder, but that's what separates people. You know, that's what separates like the best you know, the heroic, the people who are able to take that on consciously and willingly and not make excuses for it, not make excuses for their own behavior. So we'll see how it plays out. I think we're going to get Zeke's, you know, true plan soon. My only hope is that it's not too late to turn something around and actually do something of, of good here. Although we'll have to see. We're definitely operating from a deficit right now. So yeah, that's the end of this episode. I'll see you guys next time when we get a wild card, maybe in this situation, which is the Warriors second class <laughs> featuring Reiner.